Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Miguel Fuentes, and man, God is good. God is great. So <clears throat> today, we're going to get into 1 John chapter 3. But before we do that, let's pray first. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you... Um, that you come and, and, and that you rose again on the third day, Lord, for us. Lord, we ask that you would give us um, the love for the truth, Lord. And, and also, Lord, I pray that you, that you would help me, Lord, to speak boldly upon your people, Lord. And uh, to preach through authority, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So, <clears throat> well, this afternoon was pretty amazing service uh, at my church. And... Basically, um, I uh, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit for the very first time. And man, I feel empowered to speak the truth of the Word of God. Praise God, you know. And I may share that testimony uh, probably next week or, yeah, probably next week. But really, you know, the Lord really changed my life around this morning as I seek His face on a daily basis. For for uh, for further ado, let's review on John chapter two. So <clears throat> last time we speak is that you know there's there's five points to this. Is that one test yourself if you know Christ. Number two, do not love the world. Number three, deception in the end times. Number four. Let truth abide in you. And number five, the children of God. So we learn all this uh, this time. So if you will, turn your Bibles uh, to First John chapter 3. Um, and I'm going to be reading out of the modern English version. Are ready? All right. Consider how much love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us, because it is not known us. Know us. No, so know him. No, sorry. <clears throat> because it is. Sorry, because it did not know him. Beloved, now are we children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we should be. But we know that, that when he appears, we should be like him, for we should see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Whoever practices sin breaks the law, for sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever remains in him does not sin, whoever sins has not seen him, and does not know him. Little children, let no one deceive you. The one who does righteousness is righteous, just as Christ is righteous. Whoever practices sin is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was revealed that he may destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God do, does not practice sin, for his seed remains in him. And he cannot keep on sinning, because he has been born of God. In this, the, the children of God and the children of the devil are revealed. Whoever does not live in righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. Amen. 
For this is the message that you heard from the beginning. We should love one another, not like Cain, who has the, who has so who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's work were righteous. Do not marvel, my brothers. If the world hates you, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love his brother remains in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life remaining. Remaining. Um, in him. But this we know. The love of God. That he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down. Our lives for the brothers. Whoever. Has the world's goods. And sees his brother in need. But close his heart. Of compassion from him. How can the love of God remain in him? My little children, let us love not in word and speech, but in action and truth. By this we know that we are of the truth and shall reassure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and no everything. Beloved, if if our heart does not condemn us, then we have confidence before God. And whoever we ask, we will receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should we should believe on the name of His Son Jesus Christ and love and love one another as He commands us. Now, the one who keeps uh, keep His commandment remains in Him, and He is in Him, and by this we know that He remains in us through the Spirit. Whom he has given us. May the Lord have his blessings. On the reading of his word. So. This is a really beautiful passage. Here. In that the first part I want to make is that. <clears throat> the, the command to love. See, throughout First John, John uh, always, you know, uses the word love so many times in this in this book, because why it is so important is that the love is what we ought to have in our lives. One of the fruits of the spirit is love. Uh, we see how God wants us to love. God more than anything else. You know, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And, and God made it clear in Scripture that uh, that uh, if you don't have love, you're just a noisy uh, bell that, you know, you know it, it really bothers some. So, understand this, is that God calls us to love people. And to love him. And so. Um, and then number two. <clears throat> he who is righteous. Uh, understand. The whole context in, in chapter three. Uh, in verse four and five. It says whoever practices sin breaks the law. For sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away our sins, 
and in him there is no sin. Okay? Um, in the, uh, verse 6, Whoever remains in him does not sin. Whoever sins has not seen him and does not know him. And in verse 8 says, Whoever practices sin is of the devil. Now, let me explain this. If we are a born-again believer, if we are transformed by the renewing of your mind and being transformed by the power of God, how can we go back to the dog's vomit again? How can we practice sin and yet we still have the Holy Spirit within us? That does not make no sense. And so I understand, yeah, people got struggling, uh, a struggle to overcome sin. But those who are practicing sinning on a daily basis and never repented and never confessed it unto the Lord, these are the people that the Apostle John is talking about because um, as I read further into this, it makes it clear that those who are born of God do not practice sin, but yet they practice to overcome sin. There's a difference. We do not call to uncleanness, but to be pure, not only in our hearts, not only in our thoughts, but through the power of the Holy Spirit. So, you got to make that clear, is that to be a child of a God, you don't need to practice sin no more. When Jesus says, go and sin no more, he means it. You know, you are going to be delivered, and, and, and God will show you how to stay pure, how to fill the Holy Spirit up each and every day. Because it, it is crucial in the body of Christ to be empowered by the Holy Spirit to break strongholds in our lives, to break chains in our lives, to the point where we want to help others to break that stronghold, to break that chain in their lives. Amen? And so, number three, do not marvel if the world hates you. Remember last week's video, or last week's sermon, um, you know, the, you know don't, don't love the things of this world. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and a pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So you got to really understand that. And also, uh, <clears throat> turn with me in John chapter 15. The Gospel of John chapter 15, verses 18 through 20. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hates you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember, the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. So you see what Jesus is saying? You know, because that you are born again, because that you abided in me, the world is going to persecute you like never before. And we've seen this throughout the news. We've seen this throughout church history. When you fall in love with Jesus, come on, y'all. When you fall in love with Jesus, you're going to get persecuted. You're going to. 
be a target to Satan's kingdom. And understand that we are called to destroy the works of the devil and not to entertain the body of Christ, but to equip with the word of God. And what does the word of God says? And then to keep his word in our hearts so that the truth will flow within, within us. Number four, the outworking of love. If we see this from uh, verses, let's see here, from verses 19 to 24, keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. And so, in order for us to be a child of God, we got to obey God. We can't we can't be a Christian and don't obey God. That doesn't work. Because you'll 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 go into a controversy towards the towards the, the, the will of God in your life. And understand this is that when we obey the Lord, not only that we are in the truth. But we're going to be servants to serve others, to, to, to give God all the glory. And I like in verse 22, it says, whoever, so, And whoever at, uh, we ask, we will receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. Being obedient pleases God. Being obedient pleases is 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 a, is a pleasure in the sight of God. Amen. And in verse twenty three, he says, "And this is His commandment that we should believe on the name of His Son Jesus Christ, and love one another as He commanded us." Now, you know, Pastor John didn't say if you, you know, if you um. If you uh, believe on the Son, Jesus Christ, you will keep the Torah. It does not say that at all. See, you got to understand that the Old Testament has already been fulfilled. The Sabbath been fulfilled by Jesus. The sacrificial lamb, the, you know, Jesus fulfills it. The Passover, Jesus fulfills it. Uh, Pentecost, Jesus fulfills it. You know, all that the Old Testament has prophesied and has, uh, you know, instructed the Israelites to do these things. All that thing, all that, uh, all those, those Old Testament stuff has been fulfilled. But yet, you know, we should always keep the Word of God in our hearts. That's the key about Christianity. It's not about... You know, do this or do that. It's about following the Lord Jesus Christ in our everyday walk. You know, you cannot serve two masters here. The Word of God does not contradict themselves. It fulfills what God has already promised throughout the ages. Now the one who keeps his commandment remains in him. And he is in him. Okay? Now, <clears throat> do I believe that, you know, do not steal still applies today? Absolutely. Uh, does, um, let's see here, does adultery still in effect? Absolutely. See, we see here, um, you know, a few, uh, I'll say a week ago, uh, I heard that the New York governor, I can't remember his name, has approved of a new abortion law that they, that they can do abortion, well, late abortion up to time of birth. And as a Christian, as a born again believer, and as a minister of the gospel. This is the abomination 
to the Lord. Because God created life for a reason. Not only to overpopulate the earth. But the more opportunities to spread the gospel around. See that there? So understand. It, 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 we're, we're living in the end times folks. These stuff is going to get a lot worse if we do not apply the word of God into our lives. Yeah, sure, we're going to have fun once in a while. But are we going to be fellowshipping? Are we going to be, you know, you know uh, have a group of people praying for our nation? You know, we need intercessors. Seriously. Uh, especially in the, in the state of New York. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's going to be a very rough season of this time. So understand that we got to keep his commandments. Number five. Now, this is going to be like part one of the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Because there's more in depth to this in chapter four. Which I'm going to be saving that until next week. Or next Sunday. So, the last part of it says that, um, <clears throat> you know, now the one who keeps his commandment remains in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he remains in us through the Spirit whom he has given us. The Holy Spirit. The purpose of the Holy Spirit, not only to empower you, not only to comfort you, not only to guide you into all truth, but He lives in you when you are born again. And that, and that, you know, I, I encourage every Christian to have discernment. Uh, having discernment is crucial in our Christian walk because we need to know who is true and who is false, and that we. Judge through the word of God. Righteous judgment. But, you know, it's, it's very, very important, guys, to keep the word of God. To pray that the Lord will give you uh, an understanding of his word. To give you uh, knowledge and revelation of the word of God. And to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal things to you that is in the scripture. That, that God would uh, change your life around, basically. And so, um, yeah, so uh, I'll close with this. We live in a world that is full of wickedness. But we must walk in love of Christ to bring people into the kingdom. We, we live in a world that is full of, dark, full of wickedness, but we must walk in, in the love of Christ to bring people into the kingdom. So, I hope that just blesses you. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be doing a, um, a video on uh, the abortion part of it. And what does the scripture say about it and stuff like that? I definitely want to do like a video response to this. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys have a wonderful, uh, wonderful week. Um, yeah, so, you know, uh, may, I may do a testimony video about uh, how did I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And hopefully it encourage you to seek the Lord about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, I did a teaching on that Wednesday, so you should... Go to my archive and you will see you know, teaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So, because God is awesome. God is real. That's all I can say. So, may God bless you and keep you folks. And I'll see you again later.